things that the city can control, first of all. Like, they can't just make a day all the time. So, like, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of data, so I've narrowed down, so like, intelligently narrowed down to things that are within the city's control first. And then oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I've asked you to You know, you could really, if you really want to boost people's public perception, you just make a day all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So narrow it down to the set of things they can control. Other ideas? So they're basically trying to find predictors for likelihood of leaving, right? Yes. <clears throat> and construct, so this is going into a system that commu local communities will have visibility to. So every local community will be able to track its neighborhood across a number of different metrics across time. And the goal of this is to allow communities to say, you know, we really want people to feel safer in our community. We're going to try this particular thing. Does it affect safety? Does it affect perceived safety? How frequently is this uh, survey? So this survey is every year. Every year? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, just sort of stream of consciousness. Uh, so the American Community Survey, uh, I feel like pretty you know, decent geographic granularity, depending on exactly what you want to look at. Uh, it has information about uh, uh, tenure uh, at uh, your current location. So, like, I moved within the last like year uh, versus five years. Uh, I moved, but I was in the same city, and so forth. You know, so there are like ways to like also validate uh, you know, like those reports like, oh, that's good. about living you know, like, versus you know here's here's what's actually happening to tenure. That's good. So do some. So what, I hear that. One of the first things you want to do is maybe do some data integrity, or data, data quality checking. Is does this seem to jive with what people actually the, the migration patterns we actually see? I would be able to see. It, it seems like it, it's just a matter of bringing those various neighborhood level data sets together, matching them on neighborhood, having all the attributes and running some kind of you know, regression there, or something, some kind of equation on it. Probably a regression equation to say predicts. Predict very likely or somewhat likely, and you know, might play some games with that. But you know, in the end, the equation in theory should spit out some variables and strengths, and you, you know, you start to play with those numbers a little bit and say, okay, who's drive? What are the things that are driving? Now, how would you solve the problem that, in this particular case, and this is actually a real problem? The, the neighbors are different. Yeah, the neighbors <laughs> are different, right? And and some of the some of the data sets are measured at the zip code level. Others are neighborhood uh, measured at the neighborhood level, and we have shape files for both, right? But how would how would you guys go about doing the weighting? I would use the fuzzy logic matching in Python. <laughs> Very nice. So maybe then that's 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 that we try. <laughs> and but how, so even if you've done the fuzzy logic matching, yeah. how would you do? How do you construct the weights on your regression? For the uh, so if you're it, this is this is zip code, right? Yeah. Um, and this data set is neighborhoods, right? Right. And we have shape files for both. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, here we go. I know, I, but it's it, it's a. I mean, do you weight by population? Do you weight by crime incidents? Do you, I mean, what? There, so there's no, there's not a, even any common um, spatial representation across those neighborhoods. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is of like a, 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 a mean and meager nature, but uh, you can use RGIS to uh, uh, split up the intersections. You know, so if you're focusing on uh, a neighborhood, uh, yeah, there is an intersection uh, you know, procedure. Uh, does anybody know? Does anybody use RGIS? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, as of like I think uh, RGIS version 10, uh, you know, they have a like, fully uh, gone over to Python scripting. Uh, there's an arc map um, uh, package, and, and I I don't think that that's open. Uh, you know, but you can use that for uh, spatial manipulations in Python. Um, you know, where you can do these kinds of things like you're know, just breaking up neighborhoods into their component uh, zip codes. You know, assessing the the percent of overlap, and then do a weighted average based on those zip codes. Uh, so I know you can get that done with ArcGIS. I don't know if that's what open. Do you, what do you use for the weighting there? Because you don't you know that you know. 20% of, uh, you, know, you know the statistic for like zip code, but you don't know if everybody who responded 
lives in the right side of that zip code. Yeah, so um, yeah, the, the, the first thing to make it tractable. Yeah, so I'm really good at the worst case scenario is you can say, you know, uh, assume a uh, uniform population, uh, you know, like residents uh, within the zip code. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a good assumption, but, you know, that's like a first but We tractable. have population density within the zip code. Was that? Yeah, yeah, but so you don't know where you don't know, you don't know where the response you don't know where sampling uh, population is distributed. Oh yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, and, and representative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. How di how different are these data sets on the neighborhoods? Like, like that one in Clifton. I'm not sure you're saying this goes in other zones, but like, is like, are they wildly different, or are they like? There are more neighborhoods. So typically, the neighborhoods are a subset of. So they they're typically nested within a zip code, but they may overlap. So, so that the the boundary isn't necessarily fixed based on zip code. I mean, because and and I'm gonna I'll pause it. I mean, based on Chicago neighborhoods, like you know, one person's lake shore is not another person's lake shore. So we're right. not talking about you know. Political boundaries here. We're talking about slightly subjective things. Like it's all survey based, right? So it's like, well, what neighborhood do you live in? Like, I prefer to say I live in Lincoln Park than to live in. Ah, uh, yes. So there's. So these are. We, we can work really hard on trying to get a super precise answer to something that's already great at the end. Ah, yeah. So this is that's a good question. These are actually these are these neighborhood definitions are from the city itself. So the city does have specific neighbors. They've done these the So they ask what the address was of the individual survey. Yes. So they, they, they have the point the data. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so one I guess that would be one option is to go back to San Francisco and say we really need the we need the points, not the yeah. not the number. <laughs> okay. That's good. Well, the ten minutes have passed, okay. uh, but maybe we can uh, in in Pentaho, you guys or you can be free to use uh, these data to uh, to mess around with. Yeah. Awesome.